Would you please stand and join us in this first song, Ring the Bells. It is a joy to be here. Oh, how many of you were here last night, yesterday? Oh, yes, wasn't it? Oh, did you get a seat? <laughs> you didn't want to come late, did you? Boy, and even the balcony was full. Oh, my goodness, what a joy it was. Well, welcome to worship this morning on this Sunday morning, this fourth Sunday of Advent. Uh, it, is, uh, it is good to be with you here in the sanctuary, or if you're with us at home, uh, logging on uh, uh, in, in some way, it is good. You, you saw the announcements on the screen, and they'll, they'll, they'll follow again uh, in, uh, after the service. Uh, there's, it's a big week. We've got uh, service of the longest night on the 21st, that's Wednesday at 5 o'clock. For those of you who, who find joy in the season to be... Uh, um, uh, a little more uh, muted, and um, and then uh, yeah, we've got caroling also the same night on Wednesday, and then there's uh, let's you can choose between two, four, six, or eight on Christmas Eve. Or all of them. <laughs> did you hear that? You see, she she doesn't like me doing the welcoming because she already did it. Um, <laughs> text your prayers uh, to the number given, and um, and don't remember. Uh, right, don't forget. <laughs> Next Sunday, we're having service at 1030. Now, some people think they should stay home because it's Christmas. But isn't that the day you should be going to church? 
and praising God for, for saving, saving us, sending us Christ. 1030 service. Let us worship. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of heavenly forces will do this. We light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. May the visitation of your Holy Spirit, O Lord, make us ready for the coming of Jesus, our hope and joy. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Good morning. My name is Andrew Jones. I am the 
family minister here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay, and I want to dedicate this children's video for everyone who's had to do an elementary or middle school wood project. Hey friends, Pastor Andrew here. You know, when I was younger, my dad and I worked on a Pinewood Derby car. The Pinewood Derby car started off as a block of wood with some wheels and some nails for axles. We would take the block of wood and shape it into the form of a car. There was cutting, there were lots of filing, but man, there was so much sanding. You see, my dad taught me it was important to get all of the rough edges out. He wanted the car to look just right. Then we would race the car against other kids. It was a lot of fun, but he taught me something important about working with wood. It took time and you had to work hard to get things just right. My dad made a few pieces of furniture and he always used this carpenter square. It was something that he used to make sure that the angles were perfect. He knew that in order for the piece of furniture to be right, he would have to work hard and make sure that all of the angles and edges were perfect. This season, we talk about Joseph. Joseph was a carpenter. You see Joseph in every depiction of the nativity. Some would say it's not even a nativity if there isn't at least Mary, Jesus, and Joseph. That's interesting. Even if Joseph didn't completely understand all that God was doing, he wanted to do the right thing. He was there. He wanted to provide. He wanted to show mercy. He wanted to figure out what it meant for him to be a part of God's plan. Matthew 1, verse 24 says, When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. That's fascinating that Joseph always wanted to get it right. He was, after all, a carpenter. I pray that this holiday season, we would learn from Joseph and find ways to do the right thing, helping others and showing mercy to all those around us. Let's pray together. Gracious God, help us to find the right way, the way of love with those around us. As we celebrate this Christmas season, may we honor you and give thanks for Jesus, who you sent because of your love. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll take our children with us to go to Sunday school. Okay. 
We lift up a prayer that Sarah may improve enough to go home for Christmas and be able to stay there for her final run. Prayers for a daughter as she deals with mental health challenges. May God grant peace to everyone in the family who is struggling to do their best under the circumstances. May God grant healing to this health issue. And may there be peace and understanding amongst the community for this difficult journey. We lift up prayers for a friend, for her to have complete and total healing in voice and back and knees, that she may get the opportunity to sing for the Bucks again after last night. Prayer of thanks for our church community and the gift that we shared with our friends and family in the community yesterday at Believe Again. These are the prayers of our people. We offer
offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, the church and the world, in the name of Jesus, our Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now let the ushers come forward to collect our tithes and offering. This month's mission, supported by our loose change, is Christmas with a Conscious, which supports seven important ministries in Milwaukee and the world.
but hear it fresh again. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ took place. When Mary, his mother, was engaged to Joseph, before they were married, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. Because he didn't want to humiliate her, he decided to call off their engagement quietly. As he was thinking about this, an angel from the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child she carries was conceived by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you will call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Now all of this took place so that what the Lord had spoken through the prophet would be fulfilled. Look, a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did just as the angel from God commanded and took Mary as his wife. But he didn't have sexual relations with her until she gave birth to a son. Joseph called him Jesus. The word of God for the for the people of God. Thanks be. Now pray with me. God, the offerings we make, the lives we give for you. Receive them for your glory. That your will may be done on earth as it is in heaven. And now as we ponder your word, we, we ask you to, to guard our, our words spoken and heard, that we may hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You, you've had dreams like me like Joseph, that you remember for a while, perhaps perhaps until you become fully awake and then they're lost. I've had a few that I have mentioned in a journal or, or a letter, but, but there's only one that I remember over a decade later, as if it were something that took place yesterday. I remember it so clearly. It's a dream that, that changed the way I think about life and death. Fifteen years after he died, my father appeared in this dream. And in it, I was driving him to introduce him to my daughter, Hannah, who was born 12 years after he died. Her birth itself was a miracle made possible by an action that he instigated. 20 years before her birth. I can tell you about that in a more intimate moment. In the dream, we were driving down this tree-lined hill and around the curve to a park where Hannah was playing with many other children. And before I, before I could, I, I stopped across the street from the park. Before I could turn off the engine, he was jumping out of the back seat, running across the street and she was running out of the park to meet him, which puzzled me, because obviously they'd never met. How did they know each other? Well, when I awoke, it was clear to me that, this, that his spirit was very much alive. Another affirmation for me of the resurrection when, when I read that an angel came to Joseph in a dream and, and revealed a spiritual reality that is otherwise unknown, I, I well, I, I ask questions, but I do not doubt because of my experience. If you've had similar dream experiences, give God the glory. That Joseph met a divine messenger in a dream is not for me a fairy tale. So Joseph, 
a carpenter, a tradesman, son of Jacob, was betrothed to Mary. Now, marriage was a two-part event. In our, in our uh, translation, it says uh, engagement. Well, it's not quite the same as what we call engagement uh, that can be broken off without consequences. I have participated in, a, in, in something that may be similar, a, a two-part wedding, a two-part marriage. When I took a Jeep load of, I think we had 13 men in this five-person Jeep, some of them on the Jeep, taking the intended groom, uh, we had the only vehicle in the village, we, we were taking the groom to a neighboring village to meet the woman that he was, by arrangement, chosen to be his wife. While most of us talked and at, ate outside, the couple, their families and the matchmaker, I presume, met inside discussing the details like dowry, where they would live, and so forth. And one month later, by plan, we traveled again, this time for the big ceremony. Hundreds of us present, and after which we were seated in, in shifts on the ground and served an elaborate meal. Now, I wasn't there with Joseph and Mary, but this experience of a two-part marriage helps me understand the possible timing of this story. It's not just a promise of a, of a couple uh, to each other, but something deeper, something um, more, well, uh, more legally binding. Well, Joseph and Mary had likely met and promised each other to each other, but the ceremony, the big ceremony, had not yet taken place. We're not told how Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. But the law was written in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verses 23 to 25, that if a woman becomes pregnant in this in-between time, to, with, with, with someone other than her betrothed, she, be, she should be taken out and stoned to death. You get that? Mary should have been stoned to death. This is in effect, what happened to the couple whose wedding I attended in India. Two to three months after the wedding ceremony, I learned that the bride had been sent home because of an earlier conception, and there she committed suicide. Well, that would have been Joseph's legal course of action. He didn't take it. Instead, he was going to quietly cancel the arrangement and free her from the legal punishment. She would still have had to deal with uh, mothering a child as an unmarried woman, but she wouldn't have had to face the severest uh, punishment. Well, then the, then the angel came in a dream. Now, clearly, Joseph was a dreamer of spiritual things. Some, some see visions of angels. Mary had a vision of angel Gabriel. Some, like prophet Samuel and apostle Paul, hear a voice. Moses saw a burning bush and heard a voice. Others, like Joseph, are dreamers of spiritual things. When Herod was about to slaughter the children, an angel visited Joseph in a dream to flee to Egypt. And when it was unsafe to settle in Bethlehem, an he was warned in a dream to take his family to Galilee. So Joseph is a dreamer of things spiritual. This time the angel told Joseph to marry his pregnant betrothed and recognize her child as divinely conceived and claim him as his, giving him his family name. This was a radical change in course of action for Joseph, but the dream was so real to him that he believed the divinity of its source, obeyed it, and changed his plan of action, his life, and the world. Joseph put himself fully into this story. It was a conviction of soul. A cognitive decision is different, having DNA evidence of Parenthood makes someone legally and financially responsible for a child. One can do that from a distance. This was deeper. 
and called for a faithful dedication to follow God's will for his life. God was calling him into vocation as protector and provider for his wife Mary and as father, protector, teacher of child Jesus. Joseph is often called a model of obedience to God, but it's, it's more than that. It's not stoic obedience. It's, it's not even an act of kindness to Mary as he was planning before the dream. It is heartfelt, heart-driven gifting of his life to God, his family, and the world. He was making a sacred covenant. No one could tell him to do this. At the same time, no one could keep him from it, between him and God. So what can we hear from Joseph? A major character in the Bible, but one who says nothing. You get that? There's no words. Joseph doesn't say anything in the scriptures. Even when they lost Jesus in Jerusalem as a young boy, it was Mary who spoke for both of them. You know the line about the power of actions to speak loudly? Well, this is what we hear from Joseph, who loved and cared for Mary even when he was thinking he had dishonored, she had dishonored their marriage. He, he protected his family as they traveled to Bethlehem. And when they gave birth in an animal shelter in a crowded city and were visited by shepherds and magi, when they had to escape from a despotic king and when they returned and settled in a new area, he provided for his family with his trade in all these unknown lands. He was proactive and even risk-taking in facing the realities of their threatening circumstances. He raised his family to love God and grow in faith Following all the ritualistic practices at childbirth and at adolescence, Joseph's actions modeled good fatherhood for Jesus and may have modeled the respect of women, children, disabled and poor that Jesus regularly demonstrated. I'm attracted to something else in Joseph's witness. These days, 2000, United Methodist churches in the United States are leaving the denomination, preferring to maintain the church rule that says homosexual practice is incompatible with Christian teaching, often quoting from an ancient legal code of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. Jesus put aside, Joseph put aside that ancient code when instead he sought to do what is just and good, righteous for his beloved, betrothed, and her child. To Joseph, there is a higher authority than the law, even the law that came from God at an earlier time. Even before Joseph had the dream, he had determined what is good, and it was not to send his betrothed to be stoned, and after the dream, he invested his whole life in her story. Sometimes a message comes that we can only call divine because we don't recognize it as belonging elsewhere. And that message makes a clear way through the wilderness of confusion and conflict. At that time, we have a choice of a lifetime. And this was Joseph's. Silent in words, powerful in actions. Joseph, chosen by God, was not passive. 
was not a legalist, was not insistent on his own way. He was spiritually attuned, obedient to God and accepting his calling, thereby becoming a husband and father of humanity. The Roman Catholic Church chose Joseph as their patron saint of the whole church. That doesn't make Joseph off limits for Protestants. If you need someone to talk to in turbulent, changing, and challenging times, Joseph. Silent as he may be, may speak to you. Well, we may want to speak with Joseph after seeing this very pregnant church yesterday afternoon. I've been hearing the voice of the angel say, don't be afraid. I bring you good news, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born with a packed house on the main level and in the balcony, we may ask Joseph. What vocation does God have in mind for us? And will you help us accept it? My prayer for this church is to be alert. to what God is doing among us. Greet your fellow members. Give God the glory. Amen.
Thank you, team. Thank you. And you have somebody playing for you, too, right? Uh, Neil, Neil Bubke. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Neil. Oh, give God the glory. How do we give God the glory? Remember, give God the glory, because that's what's going on here. God's doing things here. That's what I think. So go. God doesn't stay here. Go with the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the binding support and strength of the Holy Spirit. Go with it and live it throughout your life, now and always. Amen. Thank you.